Hi everyone, it's Merc007 here, otherwise known as Miss Merc. Thank you for joining my board game preview video. Sorry for my husky voice, I'm recovering from an illness. Today I want to teach you how to play this wonderful game from Japan that is getting an international release. Please enjoy! Ostia is made by a wonderful company in Japan, Uchibakoya. Uchibakoya also helps support other designers by creating beautiful wooden components for their games. In 2021, they launched their game Aqua Garden on Kickstarter with gorgeous artwork and components. I was able to have a look at the prototype version of Ostia Online. The images you see in this video are not the final images. Ostia is a 2-4 player game designed by Totsuka Chuo, where players are racing to build and develop their own fleet in ancient Rome. Whomever gains the most fame in the game will be victorious. To gain fame, build your fleet of ships, construct buildings, travel along the seas collecting animals and influence, and trading along the way. How to play Set up the main board and place enough building tokens up to the number of players. Randomize and place the initial trading port tiles. And the other trading port tiles, indicated by the darker tile on the board. Place the discovery tokens with this reward symbol on the reward spaces on the board. Shuffle the remaining discovery tokens and place them on the main board according to the number of players. Shuffle and randomly place the hexagonal transit tiles. Shuffle and randomly place the destination tiles. Any remaining tokens or tiles get put back into the box and are out of the game. For each player, count out and place 7 amphora in the general supply area. In a 3-player game, there will only be 21 amphoras. Place the resource cubes in the general supply. Small tokens are worth 1, big tokens are worth 3. Shuffle the order cards and place them face down next to the board. Then reveal the first 4 to form the order row. Place the player's reward tokens on the main board at zero on the reward track. Each player chooses a colour and gets an Ostia board and construction board. Along with 14 Kobita tokens, 7 construction discs, 3 Ponta tokens. Place one Kobita token in each of the C segments on your board. as well as two resource cubes valued as one on the land to represent permits, wood, wheat, stone and gold. The top section of the player board never has any resources. Draw an initial placement card each and place one Kobita ship on the board according to the card. The cards won't be used again in the game. Fill up the construction board with your construction discs and Kobuta and Ponta ships. This is called the construction track used for making buildings and the shipbuilding track for building more ships. 
the bottommost carburetor ship is then moved to the main board onto the starting space. Randomly choose a start player and give them the starting player token. That position never changes throughout the game. Starting from the player to the right of the start player, going counterclockwise, take the construction disc from the bottom of your construction track and place it on an empty initial trading port tile. Then take one of those buildings and place it on your initial building spot. Rewards. Players can earn victory points from tiles or the reward track. The reward track determines how many victory points are worth to each player. Example, if the reward token is at 4, you score 7 for each building icon. Then you score 7 for each ship icon, regardless of Ponta or Corbitus. And 4 is worth 5 victory points at the end of the game. Players can never go past 12 on the reward track. On a player's turn, there are three steps. First, choose a segment on the board. Second, take resource cubes from the general supply according to how many ships you have in that area. If you have two ships, take two resource cubes. Place those cubes in the segment. Ponta ships are counted as two only when collecting resources at this stage. There is no limit on these resource tokens. The small and large cubes can be exchanged 3 to 1 if you are running low on tokens. The symbol on your Ostia board indicates what resources the cubes represent. These resource cubes represent permits, wood, wheat, stone and gold. The final top left segment never has resource cubes placed there, regardless of how many ships you have in that area. Thirdly, move your ships from that segment to do an action. Take the ships from that segment and place them one by one starting on the segment to the right of it, in a clockwise order. You can choose which ships to place down. You may then perform the action where the last ship was placed. The action is optional. There are seven actions. Six according to what is indicated on your Ostia board, and one free action. Let's go through them. Move. Declare how many spaces you wish to move, then move your ships forward towards a destination tile by paying permits according to how many spaces you moved. The movement can be used for one ship or divided amongst your ships but each of your ships must go to a different destination. Also, ships can never move backwards. Refer to the chart on your Ostia board to see how many permits are needed. To move one space, zero permits are needed, but to move three spaces, you need to pay four permits. When you pass a discovery token, you choose and take one of them in that area. Some have an instant benefit, Others have wild or exotic animals, which are used in the final scoring. If your ship stops at a hexagonal transit tile, you gain that benefit at the end of your turn. When your ship eventually reaches a destination tile, place it at the top of the tile if that space is not occupied by another ship. Otherwise, place it on the lower half. Instant effects happen immediately, otherwise they are used for final scoring. I'll explain the trading port tiles later on. Build a ship. Starting from the bottom of your own shipbuilding track and moving up, pay the amount of wood indicated next to the ship token to build that ship. You can build more than one ship at a time if you have enough wood resources. If there are any rewards listed, you immediately gain those also. When you build a Corbita, 
place it on your Ostia board in any of the sea areas. You can only build a Ponta ship when there are none of your Kobota ships in the coastal area on the main board, indicated by this division. When you build a Ponta, it actually replaces one of your Kobota ships in your sea areas. That Kobota ship is then moved onto the main board and placed on the starting space. Orders. Use this action to feed the citizens with wheat. Choose an order card from the order row and place it in your play area. Pay the wheat listed in the top left corner. You may additionally pay other resources listed also. Gain the resources listed in the centre of the card and gain an Amphora token listed on the top right of the card. If you paid using additional resources, then you can also get a bonus Amphora shown as the lighter colour. The Nobleman and Noblewoman symbol are used for endgame scoring. In one order action, you can gain more order cards that are face up in the order row, if you can afford them. The maximum cards you can get on a turn is four. At the end of your order action, refill the order row. Build a building. Starting from the bottom of your own construction track, pay the amount of stone indicated for that construction token. You may pay for multiple construction tokens. If there are any rewards listed, you earn those immediately. Then, place the construction token on an initial trading port tile or a trading port tile that doesn't already have one of your construction tokens on it and one of your Corbida ships has already passed through or is currently landed on. Take one of the building tokens from that tile and place it on your own Ostia board in an available space to gain future benefits for those segments. The rulebook will list what those benefits are. If the tile you placed your construction token on has an immediate effect, gain it immediately. Trade icons or end of game benefits will occur when those happen. Trading. Spend gold resources to trade for other resources by using the trading tiles that already have one of your construction tokens on them. You can trade on that space repeatedly in a turn, up to the stated maximum limit. Perform administrative duties. First, you have the option of performing one of these regular actions. Move a ship, build a ship, do an order action, or build a building as per usual. Trade cannot be used. Secondly, take all the ships from that segment, starting from the segment to the right of it, and going clockwise, place one ship into each segment. The player may then do the action where the last ship was placed. If it was the administrative duty segment again, then repeat the two steps in administrative duties again. This is quite a powerful action. Finally, the free action. Pay three gold to the supply to gain one resource cube and place it in a segment that is not gold. If you eventually build a building here, only pay two gold and gain one resource. The end of the game is triggered when either one of these conditions have been met. Any player's reward cube reaches the 12th square on the reward track. Three or more Cobita ships from any one player has reached the destination tile. A player has built all their Cobita and Ponta ships. A player has built all their buildings. Or, 
All Amphora tokens are taken from the general supply. Players can still get Amphora tokens until the end of that round. Once the end of game is triggered, players continue until the end of that round. If the third player triggers it in a four-player game, the game ends at the end of the fourth player's turn. Scoring. At the end of the game, count up your building icons and ship icons revealed on your construction track and any Amphora tokens you've collected. Then calculate the scores of those depending on your reward track token. Then add any end game victory points from your space on the destination tile. Add any trading tiles where your construction tokens are on that have end game scoring victory points indicated. Add eight points for each set of icons collected. A set consists of one nobleman, one noblewoman, one exotic animal and one wild animal. The player that earned the most victory points wins the game. So what did I think? This game has a lot of choices and multiple actions for people to do. And I can see it getting many plays. The way you move the ships in the Mancala style to determine the actions, I find it fun and it makes me think ahead. And having to think of when you eventually get your ships onto the board makes it really enjoyable. It makes me feel like I was engaged most of the time. There are so many ways to collect victory points, which means that people can try different strategies. It definitely has a feel that you're building your fleet in ancient times. I think even playing the game with two players would be quite fun. For those that like middleweight to heavier games, this one is definitely a good one to get from Uchiba Koya's collection. I really enjoyed trying it out. From the images I've seen on their blog, the components appear to be of high quality, as with Uchipakoya's other games. This is definitely a fun game to add to your collection. Ostia is launching on 2022 on Kickstarter all the way from Japan. I've put the link in the YouTube description. Also, you can follow Uchipakoya's Twitter if you're interested in their creations. Some Japanese games are quite unique and often the printing is more expensive, as the print runs can't compete with mass production. If you really want something new and fun to play, I recommend supporting these creators from Japan, even though the games may cost a little more. Well, I hope you enjoy taking a trip to Ostia with me. There are so many games from Japan that I want to share with you. I'm sorry for my new husky voice. Anyway, please like, share and subscribe to my channel if you like the content. Thank you for your support as always. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy gaming!